Greetings. Greetings, greetings, and shalom tonight uh, to everybody. We thank the Father for another opportunity. Praise the Lord to be here in the land of the living. Amen and amen again. We greet everybody tonight saying shalom, shalom uh, to everybody. Praise the Lord. We're grateful for the Father to bless us and enable us to partake another day, another opportunity again to be here in the land of the living. Amen. We're grateful. On tonight, amen. amen. Another Tuesday night trumpet sound and scripture study. And we're thankful for everybody that will be joining us on tonight. Amen and amen again. Amen. We thank the Father that have kept us, fed us, and watched over us. Praise the Lord, bringing us thus far on today. Amen. Somebody woke up this morning and had all types of things planned out for the whole day, and now they're no longer with us. We bless the Father for watching over us, protecting us, and keeping us. To God everlasting be all of the glory. Amen. We are thankful for the Father sending uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, that's to say Jesus the Christ, uh, sending him down through the 40 and 2 generations to go to the cross for the sins of the world. We're thankful for Sister Miriam. Praise the Lord that uh, utilized her anointing oil to anoint his head and his body and prepare him to go to the cross for your wicked sins, my wicked sins, and the wicked sins of the world. Praise the Lord. We're grateful, amen, to continue moving forward uh, with this holy feast of unleavened bread. We thank the Father for everybody that was on the prayer conference line as we ate the unleavened bread, amen, on uh, this evening uh, around 6.30 or so. And we're grateful to everybody that, that called into the, to the uh, prayer line and ate the unleavened bread together as we broke bread together. So we're grateful for the natural bread. Amen and amen again. And now we're about to get into the spiritual bread. <laughs> to God everlasting be all of the glory. Tonight, brothers and sisters, uh, I want to work on uh, the resurrection of Israel. Uh, typically, when we look into the 11th chapter of John, we, we know there where the Messiah, uh, Yahshua, how he uh, went to the tomb of Lazarus. If anybody didn't know, uh, now you will know that Lazarus was the cousin. He was the cousin of our Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, uh, Jesus Christ. He was his cousin. So the Messiah went to the tomb of Lazarus at the request of uh, Mary, the, uh, the two sisters, and, uh, and he raised Lazarus from the dead. But what, what the 11th chapter of John is all about when we come off the surface and go a little deeper with regards to resurrection or revelation with regards to resurrection. It is talking about a people, uh, a full, a people uh, that's further down the road in time. It's a typology. It's a, it was a real uh, a spiritual event that took place back in our homeland, Israel. But also, also when we look back, it also pointed forward pointed ahead in time to a people that will also need to be resurrected, just like Lazarus died and was resurrected. Israel, Yah's chosen people, through the prophetic were also, they would die, meaning the existence of them. From a spiritual perspective, they also would what? They would die. And they would need a spiritual resurrection. And so this is what the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, which typically people know it as the, uh, the chapter or the prophecy about the valley of the dry bones, all right? So the valley of the dry bones is a prophecy about the resurrection of Israel, God's chosen people, Father Yah's chosen people, in the last days, all right? So tonight, uh, we want to first take a look at a couple of foundational scriptures, and then we're going to get into the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 37, and we're going to work on uh, verse 1 all the way down through verse number 14. Amen. So get your book of scriptures, get you a pen, get you a piece of paper, be ready to take some script, some notes, write down some precepts, and we pray that everybody tonight will be best, uh, to the best of our ability as we allow the Father to use us, you'll be edified uh, with the word of y'all on tonight. All right, so let's open up first. I think it's very critical that we start in um, the book of Psalms, chapter 23. Let's go to Psalms, chapter 23, and I want to uh, break bread there at verse number 4. Psalms, chapter 23, and we'll break bread at verse number 4. All right, 
So we're going to look at three precepts, Psalm chapter 23, we'll look at Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verse 2, and then we'll grab a couple of precepts out of John chapter 11. All right, what you got, brother? We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, at beginning at verse 1. We'll get, we'll get verse 4, let's get straight to it. Psalms 23 and 4. Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Again, Psalms chapter 23 and verse number 4. Amen. We hope everybody have it. What does it say, brother? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, David, David writes this very familiar psalm. Go ahead and pick it up in verse 1 and read it out. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Father Yah is our shepherd. And we shall not want. Come on. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. Now he makes us lie down where? In green pastures. The pasture, it didn't just say pastures, but it got to be green pastures. Why is it green pastures? Because the greener grass is, the more healthier the grass is. And the more healthier the grass is, the more nutrients lies in the grass. Amen. So the shepherd or the flock, they must lie down where? In green pastures. In green pastures. So you can look across the mountain and grass in the wintertime, what have you, or look in your own backyard, your front yard. When the grass is yellow, huh? There's no nutrients in the grass, mm -hmm. huh? But it, it got to be green pastures. That's right. Much nutrients, huh? Amen. To those that will receive it. So the sheep will lay down where? In green pastures. Read the book. He, he leadeth me beside the still water. It's still water. Why does the water got to be still? Let you know there is no other animal that's a threat to the sheep drinking at the water. No predators there. So the water got to be still. But if the water is moving, you know there's someone somewhere else huh, drinking out of that water. So he says the water would be still waters. That means it's a safe place to drink for that sheep. Come on, brother. He restoreth my soul. Yeah, he restored my soul. And he leadeth me in the path of righteousness Leads for his name's sake. us in the path of righteousness. For what reason? For his name's sake. Why? Because it's all about Father Yah. It's for his name's sake. Everything got to be upon his name's sake. Why? Because he's the one that got to receive the glory. Thine is the kingdom. Huh? Thine is the glory. For how long? Forever. Forever. And Thine now. is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The kingdom belongs to him. The glory belongs to him. The power belongs to him. It all belongs to him. It's about him. Huh? It's about Yahshua HaMashiach. Come on, son. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, though I walk where? Through the valley of the shadow of death. Though I walk through the valley. He didn't say, I, I, he didn't say I'm there and I'm stuck and I'm never coming out of it. Yea, though I walk through the valley. You can't run through it. You can't sprint through it. You got to walk through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Then notice, it's not, it's, it's, it's not the valley of death. It's the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. It's not the valley of death where you're going to die. Hmm? But it, 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 but, but it is the valley of the shadow. A shadow is not real. Are you listening? That's right. Now, 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 jump over there to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. I want to pick up the precept uh, for, 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 for which Isaiah come along, and he's writing according to uh, 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 23, of, 23 chapter of Psalm, verse 4. But, he, but, but let's see what Isaiah got to say about it. Come on, brother. In the book of Isaiah chapter 9. Uh-huh. At verse number. Come on, verse 2. Verse number 2. And the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Uh-oh. The people that walk where? In darkness. In darkness. What people? Talking about Israel. We have seen the light. Who is the light? Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ, is the light. He, said, he says that I am the light of the world. Amen. Is that right? Come on, brother. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Yes. They that dwell in the land of the shadows. They that dwell where? In the land of the shadows of death. Oh, do you see? Now, now, through the precept, we understand something else about the valley of the shadow of death. Isaiah pick it up and add the land. The land of the shadow of death. So you see, there's a people called Israel, who is Yah's chosen people, 
that are head down the road, they're going to go into a place. It'll be the land of the valley of the shadow of death for them. You see? So we're going to a place there known as Great Babylon the Harlot, and there it will be a shadow of death. You won't be completely annihilated, although the people there will want to do that to you, but it is a shadow of death, the land of the shadow of death. Are you listening? And in that land of the shadow of death, there's a people that's gonna need a, gonna need a mighty resurrection. They will need to be resurrected because in that place, death will come upon them in terms of they will, they will, they will lose knowledge of self. They will lose uh, the, the understanding of their God, the knowledge of self. They will, they, will, they will die to the true doctrine and pick up doctrine that's false. They will begin in that land to die from the knowledge of self and the things that they were and what they used to do, they will begin to pick up falsehood of holidays or rather, rather than keeping holy days. Amen. It's, the, it's the land of the shadow of death. See? And some will even go there and lose hope. But he says it's not the land of death, it is the land of the, of the shadow of death. Now get me John there, chapter 11. Hang up back, I think I want verse 42 and 43. Let's find out now. Let's find out something about the resurrection before we jump into uh, 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 Ezekiel chapter 37. Come on, son. In the book of John chapter 11, we're going to be, pick up at verse 43. Come on, 43, 44. What did he say there? And when thus, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now notice now, when Yeshua went to that tomb, after he got word that Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was dead. Oh yeah. Got the message two days after he had died, and then Yeshua took an extra two days to get there, so he had been dead for four days. He wanted to make sure that body was dead. He wanted to make sure that body started to stink even. Amen. And what did he say there, brother? And when he had thus has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, saying, Lazarus, yeah. come forth. Lazarus, come forth, come on. Verse 44. It says what? And he that was dead. Now notice he called up a specific name. He didn't just say come forth. Amen. He called a specific name. He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Because if he just would have said, just come forth, everything in there would have came, would have came forth. That's right. Everything dead. Because in that same chapter, he says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. And I am the life. Amen. You see? And some of us, you just looking in. You just been you just been washed in the blood. We know goodness well most of us were spiritually dead. In fact, we all were spiritually dead. You're born spiritually dead. Amen. But he called your name one day and he said to do what? Come forth. Amen. Put your name right there, brother. Put your name there, sister. He says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. It was a perfect time already appointed before the foundation of the world that he will call your name to come forth. That's right. And now look at you. You didn't have a mind to serve y'all. You didn't have a mind to, to be obedient, to strive, to live for him, to give him glory and praise Amen. that his name is so worthily due. That's right. He's so worthy and, and so due of the praise. Look at you now. You can't wait to get to the house of God. Amen. You love getting into the scriptures. Amen. You love coming and tuning in and trumpet sounding uh, on Tuesday night to get the word of Yah. You just love it. And you have he quickened it. You see? Who did it? What did he do? And you have he quickened it. Put your name right there. What does quickened it mean? It means he brought you to life. Amen. He gave you a spiritual resurrection. Come on, brother. And you have he quickened it who are, who are dead and trespassing in sin. You see? I told you. Out of where? Out of the book of Ephesians chapter 2 at verse 1. It says what? And you have equipped it uh -huh. who were dead in trespassing and sin. I told you. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Walked according to the course of this world. And some of you still walking through the course of this world. That's why we banging on you so hard. Mm. Hanging. Banging. Glory to the Father. And slanging this word. Trying to get you out of trouble. And some of you, you're starting to, you know, your eyes are coming open now. You're starting to see some things that you didn't see before. 
Although you've been, you, some of you, you've been tiptoeing in the truck that's trying to get a little word, and you lean back, I don't believe in all that. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that, Brother Mark. Right. And then while you're laying on the bed, maybe you're on a job, the Lord said in his everlasting word, he said, I've seen you everywhere preaching, son. Huh? Right. But I'm going to come confirming the word, glory to the Father, with signs following. Oh. Huh? At the conclusion of Mark, the 16th chapter. I'm going to come there working with you. See, Yah is with me. Amen. He working with me. Amen. My God, if some of you, you don't got a good old resurrection. Amen. What did he say, brother? And you have he quickened who were once dead in sins and trespasses. Come on now. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Come on, the principles of this world. Read. According to the prince of the power of the air. According to the devil. That's all it means. According to the way of the devil, come on. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You see, it's a it, it's a spirit working in them that, that rebel and kick against the prick Amen. of the word of Yah. That's right. Huh? The, what did it say there, brother? And now the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. What kind of children are they? Disobedience. Children of disobedience. You try to tell them they got to come back and keep the Sabbath. Who are they? The children of disobedience. They got to come out of all of these holidays of man. What are they? The children of disobedience. You see, tell the woman she got to come out the pulpit and stop trying to lead men and reign over men and rule over men. What, what is that woman? The children of disobedience. I told you. I told you. You, you at the 7-Eleven planning your mega millions. Who are they? The children of disobedience. Go back to John 11 there. Back in the book of John chapter 11 and verse 43. It says what? And when he had thus has spoken, yes. he cried with a loud voice saying, Lazarus, come forth. That's right. And he that was dead in verse 44. It says what? Came forth. He came forth. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Bound how? Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. With grave clothes. I wonder this night, does anybody have on grave clothes? See, some of you, you got a resurrection. You came forth out of the grave, but that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Because you still got on grave clothes. Read the rest, what Yeshua got to say about it. And he came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes. See, your hand still bound. Your foot still bound. Read the rest. And his face was bound about what they knocked. See, and your face still bound. I mean, you can't see straight. Amen. And that's why we hanging and banging and, and, and hitting you with this word. Because we're trying to get the grave closed. Yeah, you got a resurrection, but you still got the things of the grave attached to you. The things of the grave is according to the things of this world. And that's where we are. We're in the land of the valley of the shadow of death. We're in the land of the shadow of death. This is where you come to get grave clothes all up on you. Huh? Is that right? That's right. All right, come on, brother. And go ahead. Go ahead. Re re what did he say? What did he say there? And his faith was bound about with a napkin. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Loose him of what? Them grave clothes. Mm -hmm. See? Somebody got grave clothes on their spiritual mind. Grave clothes on the way that they talk. Grave clothes is on your tongue. You're still cursing. Huh? When the Holy Scripture said, let no evil communication proceed out of thy mouth. That's right. See? Grave clothes. Praise the Lord. So yeah, the Father's able to resurrect us, but once he resurrect you, my God. Listen, the church is filled up with a lot of people that have been resurrected, but you still got on grave clothes. That's right. It's more to get than just being resurrected. Yeah you, yeah, you came out of the grave. Hmm? You sitting in some church uh, adhering to false doctrine, false teaching, and lies. Those are grave clothes. Those are grave clothes. You still got more work to do. Got to get them grave clothes taken off your hands, taken off your feet, taken off of your face. Amen. Amen. Your eyes covered up with stuff from the grave. Amen. We want to pull the scales of darkness. Amen. Huh? Off of the spiritual eye. All right, let's go over to uh, Ezekiel now, chapter 37. Ezekiel, chapter 37, and let's go to work, son, out of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Let's give them a little time to catch up there. Out of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. This right here is about the resurrection of a people called Israel. 
God the Father, before he come and get Israel, scattered to the four corners of the earth. Before he come, he has to give us a resurrection. Why? Because we are that valley of dry bones. The valley of dry bones. That is Israel, y'all's chosen people. Are you listening? Come on, son. Let's get, let's get busy now. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, at verse 1. Uh-huh. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. That's what we need right there. We need men of Yah where the hand of Father Yah is upon them. Yeah. Huh? That just, that he, he just, he just come out swinging. Amen. The hand of Father Yah is upon Brother Ezekiel. That's right. Is that what he said? The hand of the Lord was upon me. Mm-hmm. And carry me out in the spirit of the Lord. See? And carry them out in the spirit. I know the hand of Yah is upon Brother Marky. Wonderful. I know it. The hand of Yah is upon me and have carried me out in the spirit. Huh? Beautiful. He no respect the person. That's right. What he did back then, he's doing it today. Because that's what it takes today. Men of Yah that had the hand of Yah on them. And he have carried them in the spirit. So they can see in the spirit. Huh? Read out, brother. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Uh-huh. And set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Uh-oh, set me down in the midst of what? Of the valley. Set me down in the midst of the valley. Which was full of, of the bones. Of the land of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. Put me in the land of the shadow of death. That's right. Huh? He took, he took Ezekiel to the middle of that land of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Father, y'all put me at the mountaintop of the land of the shadow of death, yeah. which is called United States of America. And the, and the, and the mountaintop of the land of the shadow of death, the, the mountaintop of it, uh, a.k.a. the capital city of it, is called Washington, D.C. The hand of Father Yah is upon me and have carried me in the spirit hmm? and have set me down at the, at the mountaintop of great Babylon the heart. Is that right? That's right? Come on, brother. Which And he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones uh -huh. and caused me to pass by them round about. Caused me to do what? To pass them. To pass, uh -huh. to pass by them round about. Yes. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Hold up, right there. Put it in part right there. He caused me to pass about. Caused me to pass by them round about, mm -hmm. and to behold, and to look. Behold mean to look and see. Right. That's what it means. Caused me to see. There were very many. There was a whole lot of Dry bones. So, with regards to the bones, he said three things. They, they, they were, it, he said the, the valley was open. He said it was very many, the valley was open. And then thirdly, that the, that, the, that the bones were very dry. In other words, he gave Ezekiel the prophet to, uh, the ability to make an assessment about what he sees. That's what verse 2 is all about. It's about the assessment. You can't make an assessment if you're not even in the spirit. You got to be in the spirit to be able to make the assessment. That's right. So, 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 so as I assess our people in the land of the shadow of death, it, 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 just like it was back then, that's what he's saying. Look, Ezekiel writes this back then about what's coming forward down the road. And he calls me to pass them round about. Uh-huh. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. Very many. That means it's a whole lot of them. He says the open valley. Wait, why is that open valley? Because the op the, when, when a valley is open, that means that it, things appear hopeless. When you in the valley and you in the wilderness and there are mountains all around you, in that valley there are no trees. That means you can't hide from the sun, no shade there. Right. In that valley there, there's no food. Huh? Everything appears hopeless. Look at all these mountains, uh, uh, insurmountable mountains 
around about us. How are we going to get out of this valley? Huh? That's right. Everything appears hopeless. And then he says what? And then he said the, the valley of those bones, those bones were, they were very what? Very dry. The bones were very, very dry. Mm. What does that mean? The, bone, the bones are very dry. That simply means that the bones now have been, death have consumed. Because see, the flesh got to first fall off the bones. When the, when, the, when the flesh falls off the bones, and then there's no more moisture there, then the, then, then the bones become very, very dry. Are you listening? So we, got, so we, have, we have a valley of dry bones. The bones, they're, they're, it's a whole lot of them. Not only is it a whole lot of them, he says they're in an open valley. There's no, there's no place to hide. Mm -hmm. No place to run. It's an open valley. Look at the United States of America. We ain't got no place to hide. Nowhere to run. Mm -hmm. They was killing us, destroying us, doing any and everything they wanted to do us. Where could we go? We had no military. That's right. We had nothing. See? Why? Because we're in an open valley. Can't run up a tree and hide. That's right. hmm? In fact, in this, in this valley of the shadow of death, or the land of the shadow of death, we became strange fruit. Hmm. I think that's, it was an elephant's Jerry, what's her name? That singer from the old time, she made a song called Strange Fruit. What is she talking about in that song? She was saying there were dead bodies hanging from trees, meaning men, men and women and children had been lynched. They were strange fruit hanging from the trees. My Lord. Read that verse out, brother. And he caused me to pa pass about them round about. Mm -hmm. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. Yeah, and in the open valley. In the open valley, what else? And lo, they were very dry. It, it, see, dry means also it, it, it connects with time. You don't become dry until after a certain period of time. Huh? Get in, the, get in the pool, and then get out. You don't become dry right away. Right. It takes time before you before you dry. If you don't take a towel, you see. Read the book, bro. Verse number three. Uh -huh. So verse two is about the assessment. If anybody taking notes, verse two is about the assessment. Verse one is about the power, huh? Because he said he had his hand upon me and took me away in the spirit. I was in the spirit. That's about the power of the Ruach Hakodesh. Verse 2 is about the assessment. Verse number 3, read the book. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Uh-huh. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knoweth. Yeah, see, the Father has perfect knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So Ezekiel gave a great answer. You know. Mm -hmm. You asking me, but Father, I know that you know. Amen. Huh? Because you're so knowledgeable. You're so perfect in your wisdom, in the declaration of your knowledge Amen. that's unmeasurable. Amen. Huh? We, how, how can we measure your knowledge That's right. when we were created by you mm -hmm. huh? and for you were we created? Huh? You are the beginning and you are the end. See, you know if these, if these bones can live. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. Verse number four, and again, he said unto me. What did he say? Prophesy unto these bones. Uh-oh. Speak a word. Mm -hmm. Bring a word. Speak a word to these bones. Come on, son. And say unto them. Say what? O ye dry bones. O you dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Uh-oh. Hear who? The word of the Lord. Hear the word of Father Yah. Speak to the bones. That's what this trumpet sound of ministry is about. I'm speaking to the bones. Amen. I got to speak to the bones. Huh? Got to speak a word of hope to the bones. Because when these police come to bang you upside your head, kill your son, kill your daughter, huh? and all this other foolishness that's going on, when, they go, when, the, when, the, when the devil go and break into the White House and then hang a noose up outside, they letting you know, man, ain't no government going to protect you from us. My Lord. White supremacy is of the devil. White supremacy is of their father, the devil. See? But speak a word to them. Let them to understand that there is a resurrection that's coming. 
Amen. I'm resurrecting you right now. Amen. Huh? When, 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 when you gonna resurrect us, Father? When I speak the word. Amen. Huh? He says, speak the word. Why? Because the word is powerful. Amen. The word is quick. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It, the, it pierces the body of sunder what? The soul and the spirit. Hmm? The word of God goes deep to the joint and the marrow of bone. It discerns between the thought and the intent of the heart. Is that right? We need a word now down here in the land huh, of the shadow of death. We need a word from the Lord that we can cling hold to a word of hope. When we look at our young people, huh? when we look at some of our women, when we look at some of our men, when we look at the condition of our community, we need a word. Amen. We got to have a word. We must have a word. Are you listening? Come on, bro. Verse number four, and again he said unto me. What did he say? Prophesy unto me. Then he doubled it up. Watch out when the Lord double up on you. Hmm? Saul, Saul. <laughs> uh, David, David. Called his name twice. Samuel, Samuel. Called his name twice. That's right. My God, when the Lord said, when he, when, he, when he double up on you, you better pay good attention. Pay attention when the Most High double up on you. Hmm? When he give you a dream. Huh? And then come back a few days later and then give you a dream very similar to what you dreamed the first time. Pay attention. Uh, pay attention when they double up on you. Glory to the Father. Come on, brother. And the Lord said, and the Lord God said unto me, uh -huh. verse number four, and again he said unto me, mm -hmm. prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, mm -hmm. hear the word of the Lord. O ye dry bones, hear the word of Father God. Come on. Verse five, and thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Uh -huh. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I'm going to cause some breath to enter into you. I want you to imagine now a very dry place, desert land, and all of these bones, huh? uh, skulls, mm -hmm. bones, skeletons that have been in the valley for a long time. It's a whole lot of them, very many. They all stretched out in an open valley. And they all are very, very dry. But the Father knows that I am the resurrection and the life. So he tells this man of God to speak to them both. Didn't tell him to do it once, but then but told him to do it twice. Come on, son. We're still at we are still at verse number. Come on, verse 5. Verse number 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Uh-huh. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Now, if he says, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live, Israel, can we believe that? Absolutely. We must believe that. Holy Scripture says, whatsoever not of faith is, is sin. Huh? It's impossible huh? to please Father Yah without faith. We got to believe it tonight. Don't care how dim, how dark, how, 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 how horrible and horrific, amen, our situation looks. That's right. He coming for his people now. Come on, son. Verse 6. He says what? And I will lay sin news upon you. I will lay sin news upon you. Read the book. And will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put your breath and put breath in you and you shall live. Mm -hmm. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Now look at verse number six. This is a very, very, very wonderful verse right here. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to put one on you. And I will put sinews on you. What is sinews? Sinews is uh, muscle tendons. Whenever you go into your doctor's office or you look online and you see a, a picture of a man and you see that it looks pink looking, you see all those muscles. That's what sinews are. He said, I'm going to put muscles on you. Listen, what do you mean you're going to put sin news on her? In other words, I'm going to strengthen you. That's right. Because right. I know you need some strength, all that you've been through. Hmm? I'm going to give you strength. And that strength that I give you, the basement, huh? the foundation of the strength that I give you will be the joy of Father Yah. Why? Because he said the joy of the Lord is yes. your strength. Right. Anybody know who said that? Where did that come from? What scripture is that? Who said that? Amen. My God, it had to be the man of y'all, uh, brother, 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 uh, Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. After we have come out of the Persian captivity, uh, he had to speak a word. Go find me that, son. 
Go find me that Nehemiah, I believe that's chapter 8 and verse number 10. The joy of Father Yah. Mm -hmm. now, the joy of Father Yah shall be what? Your strength. It is your strength. You need the joy of the Lord. See, when you've been in a, when you've been in a situation uh -huh, that, that, that's so overwhelming to you, to God everlasting be the joy, to be the glory, and that night, amen, your, your heart was overwhelmed. Amen. And you prayed and cried yourself to sleep that night. But some reason when you woke up the next morning, it seemed although the problem was still there, you still had some strength to keep on moving forward. Huh? Why? Because he gave the joy of the Lord. He said, shall be your strength. What the word of Yah say, brother? The book of Nehemiah chapter 8. Uh -huh. Come on now, verse 10. Verse 10. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Uh huh. Neither be ye sorry. Yes. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh oh, what's your strength? The joy of the Lord is your strength. We started at the top, brother. Verse number ten. It says why? Then said he unto me. Unto then them. he said unto who? Unto them. Unto who? Unto them. Why? Because we just come out of captivity, and we needed to be strengthened. Are you listening? But y'all, the Father, not gonna give us joy right while we're in captivity. See. Nobody else go through what we go through in this country, but yet we go to the house of Yah and still give them praise. Nobody can give them praise like Israel. Huh? Nobody will praise him like Israel. Why? Because he said, he didn't say, I inhabit the praise of, 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 China, of, of the Chinese. I inhabit the praise huh? of India. I inhabit the praise of Rome. I inhabit the praise of Pakistan. No, beloved. He said, I inhabit the praise of who? Israel. Of Israel. That's what the word of Yah says. Now, the Chinese man, the Arab man, and them that are grafted into Israel, he can, he can, he can inhabit that praise because they also become Israel. That's right. Huh? You become Israel. Are you listening? Come on, sir. And he said unto them, what go, he say? go your way and eat the fat yes. and drink the sweet uh -huh. and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. This day is holy unto Father Yah. Neither be ye sorry, mm -hmm. for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of Father Yah is your strength. See, it's a holy day when you're strengthened in Father Yah. It's a holy day. Huh? When you get strength in your God, it's a holy day. It's a wonderful day. It's a blessed day. Although your trials and your tribulations are still there, it's a holy day. Because it is, it, it, because it is laden within the, within the confines and the way of holiness. The way of holiness uh, teaches us to give God praise in your trial, in your tribulation, in your suffering. That's why you hear the Apostle Paul say, man, I'd rather glory in my infirmities. Hallelujah. That what? That the power of Christ might rest upon me. Glory to the Father. Get on back over there to Ezekiel, son. Pick it up right there, verse number six. The word of Yah is what? And I will, I will lay sin news upon you. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to strengthen you. Come on. And will bring up flesh and bring and will... Bring up flesh upon you. I'm going to bring up what? Flesh upon you. Meaning now, after I, I, I strengthen you, I, then I got to cover you. I got to cover you. I got to cover you. Mm -hmm. Huh? Hallelujah. I am your refuge. I am your fortress. Huh? I got to cover you. See? Unless I cover you. See? Israel would have been destroyed, meaning completely annihilated. Uh, if I had not covered you. See, they only can go but so far to Yah everlasting be the glory. Except for I what? I cover you. Huh? Come on, son. And I will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin. I'm going to do that now. Come on, son. And put breath in you. I'm going to do what? And put breath in you. I'm going to put breath in you. And you shall live. And you shall what? And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. What do you mean you're going to put breath in us. Come on, son, read it out a little bit. I, I, I go, continue to read. Come on, verse 7 says what? And I will put breath in you. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Yeah, there you go right there. That's what I got to do. I got to speak the word of y'all as I am commanded. Huh? Commanded. Oh, valley of dry bones. I got to edify you with God everlasting word. Some things, I know some things that I say sometimes. You don't understand it. I, I, I get it. I know. Because it's stuff that you never heard before. Huh?
But this is the time, and this is the moment, and this is the hour that you hear the truth, that you hear the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I must give you all of the counsel of Yah. I got to tell you to come out from holidays, put it aside, put it down, and leave it right there where it is, and pick up holy days. I got to tell you that. I must tell you that God never commanded in the Holy Scripture the woman to rule over the man. That's right. I must tell you that. I don't care because your grandmama some preacher. That's right. Your mother some preacher, your niece, huh? Your daughter. If your daughter, your niece, your aunt, your mother don't come from out of the pulpit, huh? She's in big trouble. Amen. In big trouble. Amen. The kingdoms of the world have 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 women to rule over them. But not the kingdom of Father Yah. Amen. That's right. Doesn't mean that the woman is not is the, that the woman is insignificant. The woman is a very intricate part and play a very vital role in our kingdom. But everybody has their role and has their part. That's right. We're here in the land of the shadow of death, and death have come upon the women, and death have come upon the men that sit on the woman as a pastor. Amen. You can't go in the scriptures nowhere, not one place and find where the scriptures themselves call a woman apostle, That's right. calls a woman a prophet, That's right. calls a woman now, watch this now, an evangelist, That's right. huh? a pastor, That's right. a teacher. That's right. That's where the pastor. scriptures give her that title. That's right. You can pull out a scripture and say, yeah, she's an apostle because of this, because of that. huh? You can do that. Man, it's easy to do that. But I'm talking about where the scriptures you could go in the scriptures and find everywhere where y'all called a man an apostle, Amen. called a man a prophet. Amen. Don't mean that they're not prophetess. Right. Huh? I didn't say prophetess. Yeah, it's given to a woman to prophesy, but not to stand in no pulpit and be ordained huh? and break down y'all's everlasting word. The woman, what she can teach and who can teach as a woman is laid out in the book of Titus. Let's get that quickly, son. Amen. Get that. Scripture says, man, uh, uh, suffer not a woman uh, to teach. Know your circle authority over the man. Amen. I got precept. Huh? Come on. What precept you got? Get it out there, son. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 7. It says what? Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. Yes. I speak the truth in Christ and I lie not. See, he said, I speak the truth. If, see, you're going to have to love truth. To get in the kingdom, you're going to have to love this truth. Are you listening? What did he say, brother? I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. Uh -huh. I'm a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. All you men and women that sit under some woman preacher, I'm telling you now, you're just, you're just very dry. You in the valley huh, of dry bones and you are very dry. That's right. Come on, son. In the book of Titus chapter 2 at verse number 3. Come on, son. The age women ought likewise. The age women likewise. Come on. That they may that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Yeah, as becometh what? Becometh holiness. Become becometh of Baptist Baptist. Becometh holiness. Becoming of Pentecostal. The age women also that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. As becometh apostolic as Methodist holiness. Hmm? Islamic. Becometh holiness. Uh oh. Hmm? You in big trouble. Come on, son. Not false accusers. Not what? Not false accusers. Uh -huh. Don't be a liar lying on folk. Come on, son. Not giving too much wine. Teachers are good things. The woman can't be giving us a much wine. No drunk woman. Down the club shaking her rear end just as drunk as she can be. One time, that was a shame. Man, women don't have no shame. Mm -hmm. They don't have no shame, man. Smoking a cigar like a man. Mm -hmm. Huh? Got this masculine spirit on our women and got a, an effeminate spirit on our men. And the media pumps that agenda. It's, it, listen, it, it is intentional to, uh, to effeminize our men and to masculine our women. Come on, son. That they may teach the young women to be sober. See, a woman can teach, but it got to be, amen, one of the elder women. And what does she got? To, what does that elder woman? Who does that elder woman got to teach? That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. No, to break down the doctrine, uh, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. That they may teach the young women. To break down the doctrine of the laying on of hands. That they may teach the young women. Break down the doctrine of blasphemy. The they, doctrine of water baptism. 
that they may teach the young woman. Teach the young woman. Teach them what, son? To be sober. To be, don't be a drunk lady falling all over. Come on, son. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Come on. To love their children. To love their children. To be discreet. To be not loud mouth. To be oh, chaste. wicked and loud as a woman. Be discreet. You come in the room, everybody got to know you in the room. That ain't what your God told you to do, uh, girl. Did he? He said be what? To be discreet. I told you. Come on, son. To be chaste. To be chaste. Read. Keepers at home. Keepers what? Keepers at home. Okay. Keep the home. Okay. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. Yeah. Good and obedient to their own husband. That the word of God be not blasphemed. That's like a that's like a curse word in this society. The woman be obedient to her husband. <laughs> that's not like a curse word. See why? Because we the valley of the dry bone. Our women, when we was in our kingdom, when we was in our land, huh? That was a given. We understood that. And I know we got some evil and some wicked, uh, unruly, ungodly, hell-bound men that take advantage of, 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 of their wives and of their women. That's right. And if they don't repent, they're going to go to hell for that. That's right. Can't put your hands on a daughter or father, y'all. Because the, the man got to be in order and the woman got to be in order. I don't have time right now to deal with the virtuous woman. We'll come back later on and do a teaching on that. And show you the woman, the woman can she could be an entrepreneur. That virtuous woman, she was an entrepreneur. She went out and got merchandise, huh? And sold and sold it and sold purple. This woman was incredible. Amen. I mean, incredible. Amen. But this wicked society, the land of the shadow of death, have dumbed down our men and have dumbed down our women. That's right. And this is why our families are all out of order. Go back to where we were. We're back in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Yes. Picking up at verse 7. All right. So I prophesied as I was oh, coming. Oh, hold up. You didn't want to read up more about that women preacher stuff. You go read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Start at verse 33 and read it out to verse number 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Write it down. Write it down. This is the season and the time where you got to take, take ownership for your very soul. You got to take ownership, amen, and render what you must do there so that you can grow in the things of Yah. Just don't depend on the preacher. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. My brother, my sister, tonight, hey, glory to the Father. Uh, take ownership in your salvation. That's right. Get all of that emotional stuff. Just get it out the way. And let's be obedient to what the scriptures say. Is that right? First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, and read it out through verse number 40. And when you get to verse number 40, let me tell you what it's going to say before you get there. It's going to say that all things, is that right? Amen. All things be done how? Decently and in order. Let all things. My assignment from Yah the Father is to put the house of God back in order. Set it in order. He said, who will set it in order for me? Mm -hmm. Hold that there, son. Give me Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44 and move very quickly. Amen. Make haste and give me verse number 6. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 6. Come on, son. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel. Who said it? Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel. Thus saith Father Yahuwah, who is our king. Look what type of shirt you got. What your shirt say? We have a king. We have a king. All y'all running to some wicked pole. Voting. You're a hypocrite. See, the Lord sent me to put all this stuff in order. Didn't you, Lord? What you got to say about it, Father Yah? Come on. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, uh -huh. and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Yes. I am the first and I am the last, sure. and besides me there is no God. That's right. Come on. And who, as I shall call, shall declare it and set it in order for me. Ooh. Mm. I know he called me. I was there when he did it. I was in Hong Kong on a business trip in my little hotel. And here comes Father Yah in at the room. In at the room. First he, first he sent a dream ahead of him. Glory to the Father. In the dream, a woman was coming to me. Uh, 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 brother, brother Mark, uh, help, save my, save, help save my mother. My mother need to be saved. Huh? In a dream. Then I woke up. Huh? And, I'm, and, the, and, the, and the spirit of Yah, the Father, was moving in the room. Mm. 
I begin to hear things clicking, pop, 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 the TV, this and that. Then he spoke to me. Then he said, son, get up from where you are and get the, get your book of scriptures. And I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 28. Mm. And I begin to read. I just read. And I just read. And I just read. And it was talking about the garment of the holy priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the garment of the holy priest. And as I was reading, he said, he was speaking to me, saying, you are my holy priest. I'm calling you to the priesthood. Man, Tears dude. just begin to come down my little eyes. Amen. They just came down my little eyes. And I, I, I felt so inadequate. Not me. Who am I? I'm nobody. I'm nobody. Huh? But listen, you open up your mouth. You just open up your mouth and I will speak through your mouth. Huh? I will anoint you and I will place my I will place my words in your mouth. Huh? Go be through the Father. Just like he told Isaiah. Couldn't understand, man, why I had so much fire in my belly. Huh? Couldn't understand it. I understand it now. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. In my bones. Oh, glory to his name. Come on, son. Get back over there to where we were. Back in Who the gonna set it in order Amen. for me? Hmm? I'm sending you, son. I'm sending you to set it in order. Come on, son. Ezekiel 37 and verse 8. Yes, verse number 8 says what? And when I and verse number 9, and it said unto me, mm -hmm. prophet. Verse 8, and when I beheld... No, pick it up at verse 7. I need verse 7 out of here. Verse number 7, so yeah. I prophesied yes. as I was commanded. Uh huh. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. There was a noise, and what? And behold, a shaking. There was a noise, and there was a shaking. What else? And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Are you understanding this tonight? What do you mean there's a shaking? There's a shaking. The Lord is shaking things now. Amen. He's shaking you. What is he shaking? He's getting rid of the dust, the filth of the land of the shadow of death. Amen. Got to shake all that filth off of you. Amen. Everything you learned down in this land. Got to shake it off of you. Got to get it off of you. Why is there a noise? It's a noise that's associated when wind is coming. Amen. What you mean wind, brother Mark? Hold fast, son. Give me Isaiah chapter 52. Thank you, Father. Isaiah chapter 52, I want to hang, I want to bang, verse 1 through verse number 3. I want to work on the shaking. Come on, son. In the book of Isaiah chapter 52, verse number 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. See, awake, awake, and put on what? Put on thy strength, O put Zion. Put on thy sin news. I'm going to put the sin news on you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the muscles on you. Amen. I'm going to give you strength now. What did he say, son? Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on the strength that I'm giving you now. O who? O Zion. O who? O Zion. See, he's talking to Israel there. Talking, whenever you hear Zion, he's talking to Israel. Somebody try to come break down Isaiah chapter 37, excuse me, Ezekiel chapter 37, think he's talking to everybody. No. He's talking to his people that are scattered to the four corners of the earth, who is also called Zion. Come on, son. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Mm -hmm. Put on thy beautiful garments, That's right. O Jerusalem. Put on your beautiful garments. What garments? The garments of holiness. huh? Put on holiness. Amen. Put it on. Keep it on. Leave it on. Amen. So that you can worship me in the beauty of holiness. Amen. You can't worship me no other way. That's you right. got to worship me in beauty and holiness. That's right. Come on, son. And put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. See, it's holy, told you. <laughs> holy. Can't worship me. But in the beauty of holiness, what kind of people got to do that? The holy people. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 62, verse number 12. Mm -hmm. The holy people. And they shall call them the holy people. Where you at, son? In the book of Isaiah chapter 62 at verse number 12. It says what? And they shall call them the holy people. They shall call them, them, who? Israel, the holy people. The redeemed of the Lord. Who? The redeemed of the Lord. Ooh, you might as well get 35. Isaiah 35 verse 8 says what? Isaiah chapter 35 and verse number 8. And oh, shall, Isaiah 52, right in your hands. And there shall be a way. Uh-huh. Isaiah chapter 35, verse number 8 says what? And a highway shall be there and a way. Yeah, see, it's going to be a highway and it's going to be a way. Come on, son. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The way of what? The way of holiness. The way of what? The way of holiness. That's it, brothers and sisters. From the beginning to the end, it's the way of holiness given to a holy people. Huh? That's it. From a holy God. From a holy God. That's right, son. From a holy from a Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, 
who is the holy Elohim of Israel. Revelation chapter uh, 20 verse 6 said, Blessed and holy is he that take part in the first resurrection. Come on, Isaiah chapter 52. At verse number 2. It says what? Shake thyself from the dust. I told you. That's what he just said in Ezekiel. Uh, they, 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 there's a noise and there's a shaking. Shake yourself from the dust, from the filth. Huh? Who shall ascend uh -huh, unto that mountain? Go way to the fire. Except for he that have clean hands and a pure heart. heart. Shake yourself from the dust. Got to get the dust of wickedness off of us. All of this wickedness we don't learn down here in this land. Got to, got to, got to shake ourselves. Come on, brother. <coughs> shake thyself from the dust. He, see, look, notice who he told you. <coughs> notice who he told to shake. He told <coughs> us to shake. Shake yourself from the dust. Come on, son. And rise and sit down. Rise up. And sit down. And then sit down. Come on, son. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, who? Oh, Jerusalem. Talking about Israel. Come on, man. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Loose thy sand. Loose thyself from the things that keep you chained and bound in the land of the shadow of death. Come on. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of, of Zion. O captive daughter of Israel. I told you. Come on. For thus saith the Lord. Yes. You have sold yourself for naught, and you have... You shall be redeemed without money. Okay, we're gonna be redeemed without money. It ain't gonna cost us. It ain't gonna cost you nothing. Uh, no payment. No money needed to be redeemed. Okay. Now go back to Ezekiel. Pick it up right there, verse number eight. I gotta catch my time. Come on, son. And I beheld in Ezekiel thirty. Back in the book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty-seven, and verse number eight. It says what? And when I beheld, mm -hmm. lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. Mm -hmm. And the skin covered them above. So the so the strength came upon Israel. Strength. So you're gonna receive strength again. Come on. And the strength came upon them above. The sinews. But there was no breath in them. Uh oh. So you got, you have the strength upon you. Israel, I'm talking about as a people now, because he's building a people. This is what he's talking about. I'm building a nation back up. That's what he's talking about. I'm going to build a nation back up. I'm going to resurrect a nation. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give you strength. And the skin covered them above. And then the second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cover you. But there was... What am going to cover you? I'm going to cover you in the beauty of holiness. I'm taking all that falsehood, lies, huh? false doctrine, getting, getting rid of all of that so I can cover you in the beauty of holiness. Come on, son. But there was no breath in them. Uh-oh, but they needed something. What did they need? Then said he unto me. What did he say? Verse number nine. Come on. Prophesy unto the wind. Yes. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Say to the wind. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God. Who said? The Lord God. Yes. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Notice now. We got the, we got, he said, I'm going to give you strength. Is that right? That's right. Then I'm going to cover you. But you need some wind now. Prophesy unto the wind. What is he talking about? Prophesy, amen, because he, uh, now go back, uh, hold up. Thank you, Lord. Go back up to verse number seven. Verse number seven. Start out, start out there. Read it, verse number seven. What did he say? So I prophesied as I was commanded. Yes. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. There was a noise. There it is right there. Hold up. He said there was a noise. Then you get down to uh, verse number nine. There got to be some wind involved. Mm -hmm. What you talking about? Give me Ephesians chapter four, verse 14. Ephesians chapter four, verse number 14. Yep. Ephesians chapter four, verse number 14. Come on, son. Ephesians four and 14. Yes. That we henceforth be no more children. That we be no more children down here in the land of our captivity, the land of the shadow of death. There will be no more children that are what? Tossed to and fro. That are tossed to and fro with what? And carried about with every wind of doctrine. With what? With every wind of doctrine. With every wind, wind, That's it right there. wind, wind of doctrine. That's right. That's what's going on in Israel. I got to give you a resurrection from every wind of doctrine. You toss to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And unless I give you that resurrection, I can, I, I can strengthen you. I can cover you. 
But if you're filthy, huh, you need a shaking so you can be clean from every wind of doctrine. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. See, Yeshua said, Yeshua said this. He says, uh, the words, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So for us to get a full resurrection, we need spirit. Huh? We need spirit. We need breath. Is that right? We need life. And then we need the wind. I say it again. We need spirit. We need breath. We need life. And we need the wind. Because spirit, spirit, coupled with what? With, with breath. Coupled with what? With life. And coupled with wind is a winning situation. When we go back to the first, when we go back to, to, to the first Christ, meaning Adam, he said, I breathe the breath the breath of life into Adam and he became what? A living soul. soul. Go get me Acts now. Let me show you something. So we can get rid of every wind, every wind of doctrine. Because he said that there was a noise and then there was also what? A shaking. So if there's a noise and there's a shaking and then we really talk about wind, let's find out. Let's find out what he's talking about there. Right, give me two. Acts chapter 2, begin reading at verse number 1. In the book of Acts chapter <clears throat> 2 at verse number 1. It says what? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, mm -hmm. there was, there were, they were all with one accord in one place. When, when, when did this happen, sir? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. In the church now, see, that's why you got to get a shaking. Hey, you, where's your feast of Pentecost in your church? If you a minister looking at, why are you not keeping the holy day, a feast of Pentecost? We got it in the New Testament. Amen. The, the New Testament church was keep when the, all the Israelites from all over the world, they came right back down to Jerusalem, got on a boat, paid their little money, and made their way right back down to Jerusalem for the feast of Pentecost. Now, I can't say for sure. But I know the spirit would allow me to say that it just might be, amen, when we come out of these holidays and our people come back and keep these holy feast days, right on the day of Pentecost, there might be another outpouring upon our people. Amen. Like he did before. That's right. Like just like he did before. That's right. He might come and do it again because I know you need spirit. I know you need breath. I know you need life. And I know you need to win. Read on, son. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes. there were, they were all with one accord in one place. That's right. Come on, man. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Uh-oh, that's the noise. That's it. That's the noise right there that Ezekiel, the holy prophet, is talking about over there in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse number 7. Read the book, brother. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Uh-huh, a noise. A rushing mighty wind. Ooh. As what? As a rushing mighty wind. There's the wind right there. There's a noise and there's a wind. My God, I remember a uh, sister, uh, uh, can't call her name right now. She was at the hospital sick. I went to go visit her. Had been praying and been fasting on her behalf. My God, and I tell you what, I began to pray in that hospital and then lay hands on her. Glory to the Father. The, the Father filled her. Uh -huh, with the Ruach Hakodesh, filled her with the Holy Spirit. And then after she had finally came down a little bit, she looked at me and said, did you, did, was you breathing on me, brother? I said, no, sister, I wasn't breathing on you. Amen. That was the wind. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh? I didn't breathe on you. No. Then I took over to Acts chapter 2 and read that to her. She said, oh, my goodness. So you see, you got to get spirit. You got to get breath. You must, amen, get life. And you got to get wind. Yeshua said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So we need, we need, we, we, we need to be cleaned up from all this false doctrine. Lies. Falsehood. That we've been, all of us, we've been adhering to for so long. Got to come back and keep the Sabbath. Got to do it. The Messiah kept Sabbath. The apostles kept Sabbath. See? Got to get a Holy Ghost resurrection now. Go finish reading it out, brother. Back in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and verse number 8. Come on, verse 9. Read it out. And th then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Uh-huh. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Say what? Thus saith the Lord God. That's right. Come from the four winds, O breath. Uh-huh. And breathe upon the, the slain, and they that they may live. Breathe upon them that are slain, that we can do what in the land of the shadow of death? 
that they may live. Read on, brother. Verse number 10. It says what? So I prophesied as I was as he commanded me, uh -huh. and the breath came unto them. Yeah. And they lived and stood up unto up upon their feet. That's right. An exceeding great army. An exceeding what? Great army. An exceeding great army. You got to understand. Man, read the bottom. Read the last two verses, man, of uh, uh, chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36. So sisters, listen to me very carefully. Listen real good, sisters. Thank God for every one of you tonight. Your man on fire for the, something going on with your man. Something going on with your brother. Something going on with your cousin that's a man. Maybe something going on with your son. It is the prophecy of Father Yah being fulfilled. Raising up an army of men. That's what's going on. Because it used to be that the woman, the woman there, she was sitting on, she was, she was in the pew, on the pews in the house of the Lord. Hmm. In the house of Father Yahuwah. Huh? And the, and, the, and the man was at home looking at the football game, ain't thinking about the father. Hmm. But now the father is coming to raise up and give a resurrection to the men. Huh? Raise up a holy flock. Of men, your man ain't going crazy. It's Father Yah dealing with him. Read the book, brother. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse number 37. It says what? Thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. Yeah, I'm going to be inquired of. Because men are looking for the truth. Looking for the truth. Want the truth. Why? Because the Father put that desire in their heart. Huh? Come on, son. And I will yet be inquired of, of the house of Israel to do it for them. To do it for them. Come on, son. I will increase them with men like a flock. He's going to increase Israel with what? With men like a flock. Why is he going to increase Israel with men like a flock? Because there's been an agenda from the, our enemy to destroy all of our men. You can kill, but the father can resurrect. That's right. Is that right? Amen. Come on, son. As a holy flock. Yes. As the flock of Jerusalem. As a holy flock. You can kill them in the natural. If y'all father, if you want to resurrect, you can. You can kill them in the spiritual, because that's what's really wrong with a lot of our men, dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. But he said, I'm going to raise up and give a mighty resurrection uh -huh, to the men. I'm going to raise them up and make them a holy flock. Huh? Amen. Read that out, brother. A, a, as the holy flock. As the holy flock of Jerusalem in our solemn feast. Read that out again. Verse number 38. Come on, 38. As the holy flock, mm -hmm. as the flock of Jerusalem in our solemn feast, uh -huh. so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. They shall know that I am the Lord. See, he said, they're he said, they going to know that I'm Father Yah. They're going to know that I'm the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. huh? When you have done everything in your power to destroy Huh? The men of Israel, they going to know that I am Father Yah. When I resurrect the men of Israel. Are you listening? Come on, brother. Go back over there to where we were. Ezekiel 37 and verse number 11. Come on, 11, read quick. Got to close out. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Yeah. Who, who, who are these valley, this valley of the shadow of? These bones. The valley of the shadow of death. These dry bones. I dare somebody come along and say that this right here is dealing, talking about all, all men, mm -hmm. all nations. It's written. It's written. What, did it, what, is, it, what, is, it, what, is, what is written, brother? These bones are the whole house of Israel. Of Israel. Come on, son. Behold, they say. What they say? Our bones are dry. Our bones are dry. And our hope is lost. Uh-huh. We are cut off from our parts. Yeah, we are cut off from our parts. Read. Therefore prophesy and say it to them. See? You got to prophesy to them that's in the valley, that look around and see insurmountable mountains. Things look hopeless. Those mountain tops. But he told Israel, he said, you could command with just a mustard seed of faith. You could command them mountains to be moved. And now we see mountains are being moved now. Men, 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 are, getting, men are getting sin news up on them. Men are getting covered now by the Ruach HaKodesh. Are you listening? Men are getting resurrected from the dead now. Glory to the Father. Amen. Read it out, brother. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. Behold, O my people. Listen, listen. He said he's going to raise up an army of men. Is that what he read that verse out again? And, and thus saith the Lord. I verse read. number 10. Verse number 10. It says what? Real quick. So I prophesied and he commanded me. Uh-huh. 
and the breath came into them. And, and they, breath came into them bones. Come on. And they lived and stood up upon their feet. And they lived and stood up where? Upon their feet. Upon their feet. Come on. An exceeding great army. And what? An exceeding great army. The powers that be know that that's what's going on in our community now. They know that the Father is raising up an exceeding great army. Nobody can stop this awakening. Nobody. They will do anything in their power, but nobody can stop this awakening. Father Yah said, I will raise up an army of men. I'm going to raise them up. Hmm. Read it out, brother. Verse number 12. Come on, 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Uh huh. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people. Yes. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. You coming up out of them graves, just like Lazarus came up out of that grave. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's right. Just like Lazarus came up out of that grave. This is a prophecy that pointed forward down the road towards what he was going to do with Lazarus, which also then in turn pointed forward what he was going to do with Israel. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. I will. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. Yes. And bring you into the land of Israel. And bring us back into our land. Come on, son. What verse was that? This is ver that was verse 12. This is verse 13. It says what? And you should know that I am the Lord. Yes. When I have opened your graves, uh -huh. O my people, and bring you out of your graves. That's right. Verse 14. It says what? And let's close out. And shall put my spirit in you. Uh oh. I'm gonna, uh, 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 um. Wind is coming. Breath is coming. Life is coming. I'm going to put what? My spirit in it. Read the book. And you shall live and you shall place, and I shall place you in your own land. In where? In your own land. Yes. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, have spoken and performed it, thus saith the Lord. Man, the Lord said he's he going to perform it. Our God is not a liar, nor the son of man that he shall repent. Are you listening? Close it out, son, in Baruch chapter 2, verse number 30. Verse number 35. Baruch chapter 2, verse number 35. He's coming to put us in our land. That's what it's all about. World War III is on the brink. The valley of the shadow of death. We're in the land of the shadow of death. It's just a shadow. Nobody can destroy Israel. Come on, son. In the book of Baruch chapter 2 at verse number 30. What does it say there at verse number 35? Verse 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will make an everlasting covenant with Israel. Come on. To be their God. To be their Elohim. They shall be my people. Uh-huh. And I will no more drive my people out of Israel, out of the land that I have given them. I will no more drive them out of the land, Israel, that I have given them. Amen and amen again. Amen. Praise the Father. We thank the Father for everything tonight. We pray and hope that you've been edified that you've been built up, that you also have been challenged. Maybe you've read this chapter before, and now you've learned some new things. Praise the Lord. There is a God that's resurrected Israel all over the world where we've been scattered to the four corners of the earth. Amen. Let's stay together. Let's pray ye one for another. Let's begin to love on each other, and let's be about our Father's business. All right. To God be the glory. Come on, brother. Close us out with a word of prayer, brother. Dear Corn. Eternal, gracious, Everlasting Father, God, who art in heaven, we are truly grateful for your mercy, your loving kindness, and your grace, Lord, as we depart this place, but never your presence. We pray and ask that you continue to be with us, continue to cover us, continue to be the refuge and the strong tower that we need, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray and ask, God Almighty, that you'll be continue to be our provider. Thank you, Father. Continue to be our, make provisions for us. Yes, you, Lord. And more importantly, God, we pray and ask that you continue to fulfill your word in these last and evil days by yes, waking up true Israel. Hallelujah. I pray and ask that you continue to give us all the heart and desire to learn our heritage and our culture. And thank you once again, Father, for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Of our souls. Continue to set free, deliver. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen and amen again. All right, brothers and sisters, we bless the Father on tonight. We love you so, so much. Uh, you're always welcome to come out and fellowship with us. Amen. At, uh, where we worship, our temple is located at 4216. Uh, that's Howard Road, Beltsville, Maryland. 
Uh, 207, what is that, 207 2070. Okay, I always forget that. 20770 is the zip code. That's 4216 Howard Road in Beltsville, Maryland. Amen. We uh, render our services every Sabbath morning on Saturday morning, uh, beginning at 10 a.m. So, y'all have a last to be all the glory. You're more than welcome to come out. Uh, also, uh, if you ever feel like you want to be a blessing to the ministry, Amen. To give a love offering, you can certainly do that. Uh, you can send it a uh, check if you like, 1893 uh, PO Box 1893. That's Greenbelt, Maryland, 20705. Or well, you always can uh, send a love offering if you'd like to, based upon uh, our, uh, what is it called? Cash App. Yeah, mm -hmm. Cash App. Trumpet sounding Cash App. All you do is you can just dial that number, 301 232 8668. Amen. And uh, you can send uh, a love offering uh, via cash out. God everlasting be the glory. Now, if you don't know the Lord and maybe you just stumbled upon this uh, teaching and message tonight and it was a blessing to you and you hear the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, Father Yah speaking to you. Amen. Just surrender your life, brothers and sisters. Just surrender your life. Surrender your heart. Surrender your mind. Believe that uh, he sent his only begotten son, Yahshua HaMashiach, to die for the remission of your sin and believe that God the Father raised him from the dead on the third day. Amen. Repent of your sins and the sins of your forefathers. That's what got us down here in the first place. Amen. If that's you, praise the Lord. And you do that from your heart. And I mean from your heart. And you really meant it. You want to be right with the Lord. You now are a candidate to go down in water uh, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, which is to say Jesus the Christ. Amen. If that's you, Call that number as well, 301-232-8668. Praise the Lord. We've, um, we'll set up a time uh, to bring you in and take you down in the water. Uh, if you want to reach out to us via Facebook, uh, hit us on our inbox via Facebook. Or you can email us at trumpetsounding581 at gmail.com. To God be the glory. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to write us a letter, with a question. You can send it also to that P.O. Box, P.O. Box uh, 1893, that's Greenbelt, Maryland 20705. If you want to join us, to God be the glory, for prayer, uh, we make prayer as a ministry, 6 a.m. every Tuesday morning and every uh, Thursday morning, 6 a.m. every Tuesday morning, every Thursday morning. That number is 515-604-9094. Uh, that's 515-604-9094. And you just put in your passcode, a 798-331-450 pound sign. All right? More than welcome to join us. And anyway, we've been uh, going online every uh, night this week. Uh, we're, we're, we're continuing forward with the Holy Feast of uh, uh, Unleavened Bread. And we've been eating unleavened bread uh, every uh, night this week at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, you can join us also on our Trumpet Sounding uh, Prayer Conference line. And we'll be on there at 7 p.m. Uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. And then we'll be right back in the house of the Lord, Father Yahuwah, uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. to render uh, service. Amen. Trumpet Sound is a good place to come and worship. Is that right? Amen. Amen. We have some great worship. Love to have you come out and visit uh, with us. You're more than welcome. All right. Y'all bless everybody tonight. Everybody go in peace. We love you so much. And we bid you Godspeed and shalom, shalom, shalom to everyone. <clears throat>